The Eurasian response to the world economic crisis, Astana, Minsk and Moscow are trying to find ways of expanding mutual trade and economic cooperation. Everything is according to protocol. Five foreign ambassadors presented their credentials to the president of Kazakhstan. Why was the Akmala region called a miniature of Kazakhstan? A Republican forum dedicated to the 20th anniversary of the People's Assembly of Kazakhstan held in Kakshitau. Medical tourism in Astana. Advanced equipment, best doctors and reasonable prices. Ordinary Kazakh citizens will get free treatment based on the quotas in the new medical center. What is Nauri's Koje and what does one eat it with? How to celebrate the most ancient holiday on the planet without breaking the millennial traditions. Good evening, I'm Rahim Ashakbaev and this is Kazakhstan Weekly, where we summarize the major local and international news of the past week. Our tonight's guest is a known public figure, Adil Akhmetov. Mr. Akhmetov, I'm glad to see you. Good evening. Astana, Moscow and Minsk will develop a joint plan for overcoming the current economic crisis. The presidents of the three countries, Nostan Zarbayev, Vladimir Putin and Alexander Lukashenko, have met in Astana and discussed challenges both in economic and political sectors. Although the talks were held behind closed doors, the leaders of countries have told journalists about the main considered topics at the final briefing. As the president of Belarus, Mr. Lukashenko, has noted, the meeting was brief, since the sides had the same positions toward major challenges. Let's watch the story to learn more about the details. The world is facing challenging times. That was the main message to the international community during the meeting of the presidents of Kazakhstan, Russia and Belarus in Astana. Both Alexander Lukashenko and Vladimir Putin were invited by President Nursultan Nazarbayev. The heads of state openly discussed the issues which the union faces today. According to the Kazakh president, the low oil and other export commodity prices complicated the matters for the EAEU. As a result, the trade turnover between Russia and Kazakhstan has decreased by 20%. However, the president of Belarus had come up with a solution to this problem. In order to increase the trade turnover, according to Lukashenko, the EAEU needs to supply local markets with commodities produced within the union. The Russian president underlined the importance of joint efforts and close collaboration to respond to the external financial and economic threats and protect the joint market. Putin proposed to negotiate the possibility of forming a monetary union in the future. Prior to his visit to Astana, Vladimir Putin instructed the central bank and the Russian government to work out questions of a possible single monetary policy and a swap to mutual regional currencies, the Russian and Belarusian rubles and the Kazakh tenge until September 1 this year. The meeting in Astana was planned to be informal with no documents for the sides to sign. As the Kazakh president said, the meeting was an opportunity to synchronize the clocks. The three presidents have agreed to develop a trade, economic and investment cooperation and tasked their governments to take measures to restore the growth in the mutual trade turnover. The presidents plan to meet again on May 8 in Moscow in order to once again demonstrate the unity of the three countries and to address the existing attempts to rewrite history and undermine the victory of the World War II veterans in the CIS. It is obvious that this year will be a test on toughness for the created model of the Eurasian economic development of our countries. In 2015, we shall discuss in detail the challenges of our further cooperation in economic sector and solutions to the questions that will arise. It is important to develop a joint action plan to overcome the signs of crisis in our economies. The meeting of the presidents of Kazakhstan, Belarus and Russia was devoted to this challenge. It's clear we should stay together. There have been too many challenges that were recorded in our history. We are facing very serious challenges, including an attempt to erase our common history. Therefore, we need to show economic and political unity in the run-up of the 70th anniversary of victory in World War II. Rosultan Nazarbayev is certainly a recognized leader of his country. He's a well-respected person in Kazakhstan and in the world. He's a prominent politician, well-known and reputable. In this sense, he seemingly doesn't need to be supported, but for everyone who loves Kazakhstan, everyone who cherishes the stable, progressive and very noticeable development of Kazakhstan, of course, it is very important to support the president of Kazakhstan these days. I wish you success. So, Mr. Akhmetov, what can you say about the results of the meeting in Akarda? It was a very expected meeting. Yes, it was a very expected meeting, and as you have just mentioned, that it, was, it is a very short meeting. And uh, 
uh, first of all, we should underline that uh, with the beginning of the year 2015, Eurasian Economic Union started already. And uh, the three presidents uh, yesterday discussed the uh, economic uh, and trade um, uh, issues uh, during the meeting. And of course, uh, they took into consideration the uh, economic crisis in the world and also in the Euro Eurasian Economic Union area. Of course, uh, the three presidents discussed <coughs> very many issues, among them uh, the president of Russia uh, mentioned uh, to create uh, currency union. Yeah, he said that we are ready and, yeah, and uh, uh, should look. We are ready, he said, but uh, I would say it's too early to speak about it, I think. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, during the crisis time, I think it is uh, out of question because ruble is uh, very weak very weak and the oil prices uh, price uh, is very low and the economic crisis very deep uh, at this period i think uh, the three countries should uh, uh, first of all pay attention how to overcome this crisis when things improve perhaps later on uh, we have a lot of time to discuss uh, on the other hand uh, we didn't expect that uh, this issue will be raised during this meeting and uh, that's why it's a bit early to touch, to stipulate or to discuss this issue here. Kazakhstan has established diplomatic relations with the Kingdom of Tonga. A joint communique was signed on Tuesday in New York by the UN permanent representatives of both countries. In the meantime, heads of five diplomatic missions presented their credentials to the president of Kazakhstan, Nurstan Zabayev in Astana last week. Among them, there were the ambassadors of Kuwait, the United States of America, Pakistan, Bulgaria, and Saudi Arabia. Nursultan Zarbayev congratulated the diplomats with the start of their diplomatic missions and expressed confidence in the further development of bilateral relations. The president has reminded the ambassadors about the important projects for Kazakhstan. The country is becoming the business, transit, and logistics hub in the Central Asian region. Also, they discussed the issues concerning the International Exhibition Expo 2017. In the near future, they all will have an intensive joint work. This year, Astana will host the 8th Economic Forum, the 5th Congress of Leaders of World and Traditional Religions, and a number of events under the auspices of the Organization of Islamic Cooperation and other major international projects. The president also stressed that Saudi Arabia is Kazakhstan's key partner in the Arab and Muslim world. The countries have a mutual interest in cooperation in agriculture, petrochemicals, energy, transportation and tourism. Nursultan Azarbayev also emphasized the high level of multi-directional partnership with the U.S. According to the Kazakh president, there are over 400 active joint ventures in the country today. The bilateral trade turnover last year totaled some 2.5 billion U.S. dollars. The scope of mutual interest of the two countries includes international and regional issues including nuclear disarmament, rehabilitation of Afghanistan and maintenance of stability and security in the Central Asian region. In turn, the ambassador of Pakistan stressed the country's transit possibilities. His Excellency Abdul Salih Khan mentioned his plans to strengthen economic ties, cooperation in the sectors of energy, infrastructure and communications. The ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary of the Republic of Bulgaria, Vasil Petkov, had underlined the deep historical roots that bond the two countries. At the same time, he promised to focus on the implementation of the existing potential within the intergovernmental cooperation. The ambassador of the state of Kuwait conveyed his greetings to Nusultan Nazarbayev on behalf of the Emir Sabah al-Ahmad al-Jaber al-Sabah. Later, the ambassador of Kuwait expressed his gratitude to the people of Kazakhstan for the warm welcome and benevolence, while the U.S. ambassador George Kroll emphasized the country's stability and prosperity. Kazakhstan, being the largest country in terms of territory and second largest in terms of population in Central Asia, has strategic location at the heart of Eurasia. The two countries have great potential to cooperate with each other in different dimensions of bilateral cooperation, particularly economy, trade, science and technology, and culture. The leadership of the two countries is in constant touch with each other through exchange of visits. So, Mr. Akhmetov, I would like to know your opinion as a person with a huge diplomatic uh, experience. How important is the personality of ambassador 
uh, and his personal relations to the country, or it's secondary factor? Uh, personality of uh, ambassadors is very important because any ambassador, for example, any Kazakhstani ambassador abroad represents the interests of the country. And the ambassador is personal representative of the president. And uh, uh, much depends up upon the activities of the ambassador. For example, especially um, at the uh, contemporary, uh, for example, uh, time, for example, ambassadors uh, should promote economic interests, political interests, cultural interests of the country which he or she represents. And uh, being ambassador to UK, for example, I tried to do my best uh, to attract as much uh, investment into Kazakhstan from UK. And as you know, UK, UK was one of the uh, great investors of Kazakhstan after Netherlands and the US. And now, the same uh, situation is going on for years, and uh, a lot of uh, companies and uh, work in Kazakhstan, UK companies. And uh, I would say all the ambassadors of Kazakhstan abroad work in the same way. Their main task is to uh, represent Kazakhstan in those areas which I, I have enumerated and to attract as much investment as possible and to promote economic projects, uh, mutual economic pro uh, projects, because every country has its own interest. As for example, uh, in the 16th century, oh, one of the uh, UK, uh, UK's prime minister said, UK uh, has no permanent friend or permanent enemy. UK has always interest, its own interest. I think uh, this is true. Any country has always its own interest. And uh, ambassadors promote those interests and uh, they uh, unite or connect uh, different countries with Kazakhstan or vice versa. That's why uh, our president uh, received the credentials from uh, four or five uh, ambassadors. And the uh, United States is our economic partner, as you know, and uh, from among uh, Arabic countries, for example, Saudi Arabia number one, is number one. And uh, other countries are very important. And the relationships with these countries uh, will uh, develop. And uh, uh, I think uh, it's a very important uh, issue. And uh, traditionally, the president uh, meets the ambassadors of the foreign countries every year, annually. Mm -hmm. And he often uh, uh, acquaint them with the situation within the Kazakhstan, its aims, economic and uh, other interests in the world. And uh, this meeting was one of them, I think. Northern Kazakhstan is often referred to as a miniature ethnic model of Kazakhstan. The region is home to more than 100 nationalities, so it was no surprise that the forum called The Destiny of My Country is My Destiny, devoted to the year of people of Kazakhstan with the participation of Nuslan Zarbayev, was held in this region. The president has paid a visit to Akmala region. Let's watch the story to find out more. The Kakshitao Stadium Borabai has accommodated all the delegates of the forum who arrived from Kazakhstan's different regions. Borobai is the biggest stadium in the entire Akmola region. It was built four years ago. Some 500 local students train within the stadium's programs, while adults also find programs to their needs to keep a healthy lifestyle. Social policies towards ordinary people have been discussed during the forum. The state wants to take care of young people, retirees and other categories of the population that need support. The president had noted during his speech, more hospitals, secondary schools and kindergartens are being built. As President Nazarbayev emphasized, the primary goal of the government is to provide citizens with jobs, stable earnings, housing and confidence in the future. The five new national reforms announced in Kazakhstan will focus on the implementation of the above-mentioned tasks. 
But to achieve these goals, the Kazakh people should stay committed to the fundamental ideas of the People's Assembly of Kazakhstan. For information, the region fosters the biggest number of acting boards of public consent. 5,000 people are members of the People's Assembly of Kazakhstan. Almost all speakers have underlined the importance of the People's Assembly that united representatives of all ethnic groups in the country. President Nazarbayev also mentioned how important it was to keep the growth of economic development. Traditionally, the region that has always provided with wheat and bread should not be focused only on agriculture. Mechanical engineering and processing are the most promising sectors. The second five-year industrialization program will spawn 36 new projects in the region totaling 645 billion tenge. Today, the Akmala region supplies the capital with almost a half of the whole stock of milk and meat. However, the president says there is still room for further development since the market in Astana always expands due to the population growth. So, Mr. Khmetov, let's talk a little bit about agriculture because agriculture is the leading industry for northern Kazakhstan. So, uh, according to the official figures, the subsidies for agrarians in Akmala region have increased eight times. In your opinion, is it enough? I would say not enough because <coughs> agriculture in every country is a money consuming area because if we don't allocate for example capital into this area this area will never develop and from this point of view our government is doing its best and besides that uh, Akmola region uh, let's say is the breadbasket of Astana it supplies uh, more than 50 percent of uh, milk and uh, meat and also uh, this uh, area grows a lot of uh, uh, wheat, uh, the wheat with high quality. And that's why there is uh, Astana is a big market for us, uh, Akmola region because the, the population of Astana is growing and uh, uh, Akmola region might uh, grow also the products, uh, food products and uh, very many other products. On the other hand, uh, during the visit uh, we uh, saw that uh, as, uh, Akmola region is not only an agricultural area, also machinery is developing. Kamaz, for example, engineering is there. It supplies Kamaz uh, to the whole country and uh, it exports, I think, to other countries. And uh, besides that, we should say that uh, Akmola region is a touristic center. Let's say Burabay area attracts a lot of tourists. Uh, from all over the world, especially from Russia, from all parts of Kazakhstan. That's why there is a uh, uh, great opportunity to develop uh, tourism in this area, also uh, uh, industry. Besides that, for example, uh, in accordance with the second uh, five-year industrial uh, program, about 36 uh, projects will be uh, implemented in this region. That means uh, this region is developing from year to year. Uh, of course, major attention is paid to agriculture area because it supplies food to Astana. It's a very important fact, we should say. The medical cluster in Astana is being actively created. It accumulates the best features in the medical arsenal of modern medicine. The advanced know-how, the high-tech equipment and highly qualified professionals. Some foreign patients travel to Kazakhstan to get treatment in the country's clinics today. The goal now is to make this flow massive and constant and to provide our citizens with the opportunity to get qualified medical care in their own country. One more medical center opened this week in Astana. The Medical Center of Presidential Affairs of Kazakhstan should treat all citizens, not only civil servants, the head of state noted during the opening ceremony of the new rehabilitation complex. The total area of the multi-purpose center totals 84,000 square meters, including 13 buildings, 4 outpatient departments for 1,000 visits per shift, 35 structural units and a 200-bed hospital. The clinic features a unique diagnostic unit, Department of Nuclear Medicine, as well as the first hybrid surgery room that allows having two surgeries at the same time. The highly qualified medical staff will be another advantage of the new center. According to Nur Sultan Nazarbayev, the center will contribute to the development of the quality services and the influx of medical tourists to the country. Kazakhstan reached a certain level of success in this regard. The number of clinics certified by the international standards grows each year. According to the National Medical Holding, more and more foreign patients choose Kazakhstan to get medical treatment. 
Local doctors keep mastering complex surgeries that have been carried out only abroad before. And if Kazakh citizens sought to get treatment in clinics abroad, now they choose local clinics. The recently opened medical center promises highest quality of medical services. The experience of the entire world's medical practice will be accumulated and utilized at the center with the development of leading experts. Doctors claim that ministers and ordinary citizens will receive absolutely identical medical care. Every year, the government will allocate a special quota for Kazakh citizens to get treatment in the medical center of presidential affairs. We did everything that depended on the state. We've built a good integrated and functional facility and purchased the best up-to-date medical equipment the world has to offer today. Even foreign Western doctors probably noted that they don't have such equipment. The diagnostics here is excellent and everything depends on diagnostics and on the competence of doctors, of course. And this will serve to the benefit and health of our Kazakh people. Now we have an improved technology, the minimally invasive technology. This means we can perform any kind of surgery without incision. So, Mr. Akhmetov, we can see uh, in our country many new modern medical centers, and the government for sure pays uh, proper attention to the healthcare system. So, in your opinion, uh, how much has our medicine approached to the level of the world leaders like South Korea, United States? First of all, I would like to attract uh, attention, your attention and the audience's attention uh, to President's last address to the people. If you remember, in his address, uh, our president uh, declared that uh, the uh, state will never decrease the, for example, uh, uh, budget of the social sector, you see. Uh, social sector will never suffer because uh, social uh, well-being of the people is number one in, wa in our country. And uh, from this point of view, this uh, new center uh, proves the words, uh, the promise of the president. And uh, as we have just seen, that uh, this new center is equipped, uh, well-equipped, uh, high-tech, uh, medical, for example, equipment uh, is, uh, is provided here. And uh, in, med, uh, in healthcare, for example, diagnostics is number one, and then professionals. And now Kazakhstan has achieved a lot of results in, for example, equipping the medical centers with uh, number one high-tech, for example, equipment. And on the other hand, the quality of the professionals is growing from year to year. Let's uh, underline that. The surgeons of Kazakhstan uh, who work in Astana and elsewhere, they can make any kind of operation. It's, it was not, uh, it's not a secret, for example, earlier our patients often preferred, for example, South Korea, Israel and Germany uh, to undergo a sort of any kind of operation. Uh, now from now on, and with the help of the um, equipments which can put right and exact diagnostics and uh, with the help of the professionals these kind of surgical operations can be uh, implemented here in uh, Astana and from this point of view medical tourism might uh, might also develop uh, patients from other countries might also come to Kazakhstan to get treatment from this point of view this new center is uh, Astana's pride because not only the civil servants will get treatment there, any kind of patient can come and get treatment there. This is a big center, big center. And uh, with its hospital for, uh, with uh, 200 beds, I think. And uh, any kind of uh, treatment can be supplied from this center. I also heard that we are quite advanced in the cardiological uh, Cardiological surgery. center, yes. So we are among 30 countries in the world. Yes. Who our, our Specials, uh, they are very highly qualified. And uh, they, on the other hand, uh, taking advantage of, for example, uh, Bolashak's uh, scholarship, uh, very many uh, students, very many specials get, uh, get trained abroad. And, uh, the, for example, the, in the UK uh, and in the United States, in very many other centers. That's why when uh, they return, and uh, they uh, can operate 
here in this kind of centers, not only in Astana, but elsewhere in all the regional centers. Kazakhstan will celebrate the main national holiday, which signifies the beginning of the spring's awakening, Nauris. It's one of the most ancient holidays in the world. Nauris has been celebrated for more than 5,000 years by many people of Central Asia. For Kazakhs, it's the symbol of spring's rebirth of nature, the triumph of love, fertility and friendship. The history of Nauris goes back in centuries, and therefore the main principles of the celebration are based on traditions and customs. Nauris is a part of the intangible cultural heritage of humanity recognized by UNESCO. The UN General Assembly recognized March 21 as the International Day of Nauris. Depending on the national traits, the holiday is celebrated differently in many countries, but it has one common feature preparation of a special meal consisting of seven main ingredients. In Kazakhstan, it is called Nauris Koje. Meat, dairy product, several types of cereal, soup, noodles and salt are used in the preparation of the dish. Kazakh cooks believe that the best Nauris Koje is prepared with horse meat. Usually it is a specially dried meat stored throughout the winter. It is important to choose the right dairy ingredients, which is often katik, a fermented milk product. The huge cauldron where the dish is cooked symbolizes the unity of people. Nauris Koje, which is everyone's favorite symbol of Nauris, is prepared in almost every home and in places of public festivities. Nauris is celebrated by more than 300 million people in 30 different countries. For the first time this year, it was celebrated in the Brooklyn City Hall. The representatives of Turkic countries and the Kazakh American Alliance threw a bright cultural program, including performances of Kazakh, Turkish, Azerbaijani, Turkmen, Uzbek, and Kyrgyz singers. Children's dance groups pleased the audience as well. Nauris Meirami is always accompanied with mass fun activities. In Astana, the main celebrations with installed yurts took place in the Republican Cycle Track Sari Arka in the surrounding area. A yurt is a portable structure traditionally used by nomads in the steppes of Central Asia as a home. The guests and visitors were warmly welcomed. Among many festivities were a concert, traditional dishes and a traditional dastarkhan, a table with treats for passers-by while sports playgrounds kept other people busy. President Nur Sultan Nazarbayev also took part in the festivities. He congratulated the people on the holiday, the spring's rebirth. Happy Nowruz! I congratulate everyone on this bright holiday, Nowruz, which comes with the first warm rays of sun. Our country, Kazakhstan, which we have built together over the past years, has become strong and powerful, and every citizen is proud of Kazakhstan. We have been building it together. We will continue to build it, making it well-known, powerful and strong, a country that will serve the people. Over four years, 30 million square meters of housing has been constructed, along with new kindergartens and hospitals, and also housing and public utilities. Everything has been done for the ordinary people, for our people. I wish every family well-being, to have a good holiday, good future for our people. Happy holidays. A beautiful event, and it's the coming together of all of the country, uh, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, uh, Turkey, and it just shows, to, uh, shows us all how rich the culture is here in America, where you love your adopted country and still embrace the culture of your homeland. So, Mr. Ahmedov, throughout 5,000 years, people of East celebrate this holiday. Uh, do you think anything has changed? First of all, we should underline that Nauruz, uh, the word Nauruz contains, uh, it's a Persian uh, word. Uh, it contains new and year, these two words. Nauruz, uh, from this point of view, Nauruz is not only the beginning of spring, but it coincides with the beginning of the new year. And it is celebrated in 30 countries and millions of people uh, celebrate uh, Nauruz and uh, it's also traditional uh, one of the main uh, traditional uh, day, uh, days of uh, Kazakhstan and it is celebrated all over the all over Kazakhstan by the way there is some uh, specific uh, feature uh, of Nauruz in Kazakhstan in western areas in Atrau area in Akhtau area in the in Western Kazakhstan, in some parts of Aktubeya Aktu region, Nauruz starts not with the beginning of 21st, but with the beginning of uh, 14th. And it is called uh, Kurusu. Every year, for example, after winter, people, um, especially young people, uh, come to the elderly people uh, to say 
hello, how are you? And uh, this is traditional, you see? And Nauruz uh, Koje is the main meal of uh, this celebrity. Uh, this meal is prepared, uh, uh, this meal contains uh, very many cereals. Ingredients, I think, uh, 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 are always seven. Horse meat, mm, other meats may be used also, katik, uh, uh, dairy, uh, fermented uh, product, and also cereals. And uh, uh, during Nauruz, for example, Nauruz Kaje is prepared in every family. In Kazakhstan, for example, I was born in a rural area, and every person can come in uh, into, any, uh, into any house and he served Nauruz Goje. You see? This is traditional. That this um, uh, Nauruz brings people together. And now, Kazakhstan is a very multi ethnic country, and uh, Nauruz has become not only the, uh, for example, uh, the great day of Kazakhs, but it is shared with all the ethnicities who live in Kazakhstan. And of course, abroad, uh, in Turkmenistan, in Uzbekistan, in Kyrgyzstan, even in Tajikistan, and very many other countries, in Turkey. That's why this is a great holiday, great holiday. And how do you celebrate Nauris with your family? The same, you have the same way as others. Traditions. The same way as others. Mm -hmm. Now it is, uh, Nauris Kajra is being prepared. Mm -hmm. As soon as I finish this program, I'll come and I'll okay. test my Nauris Kajra. And uh, in this connection, uh, we should also, I would like to congratulate our countrymen uh, with this great holiday and uh, wish success and prosperity to every family. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for the great discussion. Hope to see you next week in our program again. Thank you. Finally, here is a brief preview of the events of the coming week. On Tuesday, March 26, the official campaign of presidential candidates will begin in Kazakhstan. On March 27, Tajikistan will hold elections of members of the upper house of parliament. And on Sunday, March 29, the citizens of Uzbekistan will choose the head of state. We'll discuss this and other important events in our next program. We congratulate all our viewers with a bright spring holiday, no risks. I wish every family peace, happiness and prosperity. Thank you for watching. Best of luck and goodbye.